Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bagley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bagley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now, here's your host, Pastor Paul Bagley. Welcome to the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Bagley, and I'm excited about this broadcast. I mean, are you serious? Last week was such a powerful program, and we talked about Alpha and Omega, and we talked about how God really moved. Well, listen, as Jesus is being manifested in the book of Revelation, he appears seven different ways to seven different churches. Was he also appearing in seven different times? And are we in the last days now? Is this church seven? When we come back, we're going to take a look at the book of Revelation, the prophecy of the apocalypse or the revelation of Jesus Christ. And then when we dig into this, we're going to find out. You're going to find Jesus is everywhere. And if you'll come to him, he's the Savior. You can get ready to go. We're in the end times. This is the coming apocalypse. I'll be right back. Released from Cincinnati, a four-part DVD set on the end times. Planet X, Nibiru, The Seas Rising, The Pole Shift, Clyde Lewis, John Moore, Stephen Bendenoon, and myself bringing forth dynamic information relevant to the last day. You can get this four-part DVD set at my website or individually at my Patreon channel. The heavens are shaking. This is a must-see. Get it now. All right, all right, seven churches of the last days. Well, good place to start would be in the last book, the book of Revelation, which actually gives us the apocalyptic view of not only the seven churches of Asia then, but the seven different periods of the church age and the last two is so important to study. But let's start right where we need to be. Revelation chapter 2, the Bible says, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, these are Jesus' words, by the way, these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand and who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Now, last week we learned that the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks, the stars are the angels of the seven churches and the candlesticks are are the seven churches. So Jesus is saying to the church at Ephesus, I'm appearing to you holding the angels of the seven churches in my right hand, and I'm walking through the midst of the seven churches. This is how he presented himself to the church at Ephesus. He said, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, And thou hast tried them, which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake has labored, and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, And remove thy candlestick out of its place, except thou repent. So Jesus is saying, look, I'm in charge. I'm Alpha. I'm Omega. He said that three times. I'm the first and the last. In the first chapter of the book of Revelation, he appears to this first church, Ephesus, with the the seven stars or the seven uh, angels in his right hand walking in the mist. He brags on them. He sees they've worked hard. He sees they've labored and they've been consistent. Still had a problem with them that they had forgotten their first love. They had gotten so busy in the work of Jesus and the ministry that they forgot the first love and the purpose and and the wanting to serve you, Lord, in their life. Any Christian could fall into this if they're not careful. This is why you need to take communion Or you should do devotions every morning to start your day. Do a devotion. Soften your heart. Humble yourself before the Lord. Pray without ceasing, okay? Uh, Pray over your meals. Simple thing to do, but it it means humbling. It's respect. No matter if you're in a restaurant or where you are, just do it. Just, Just do it. 
Bless that food. Thank the Lord. Be kind to others. Turn the other cheek. Do the thing simple. Stay in that love spirit. Soft answer turns away wrath. Stay in that. You'll be fine, okay? That's what he's basically saying. Go back and start doing that again. Now, look what he says in verse 8. And unto the angel of the church of Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. Now, he comes to them with full authority. I am the one that was dead and I'm alive. I'm the first and last. So he's still appearing as Alpha and Omega. He says, I know thy works, in verse 9, and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich and know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, and ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. So he's saying, look, I see your situation. I know that you've worked hard, that you've been, been in, uh, you've even had, went through some poverty. You've also notified, you've notified those that are blaspheming the Lord. And, uh, and some of you are being thrown into prison. You're a persecuted church, and you're being persecuted heavy. I just want you to be faithful unto the end, and I'm going to give you a crown of life. Now, if you study Jack Van Hippie's theory, which I think was a great, great teaching, I'll be honest with you, of the seven dispensations or seven periods, I should say, of the church age, uh, this church here, this, this period of time took place, oh, big time. Christians were being fed to the Roman lions. They were being slaughtered in, the, uh, you know, in Athens. They were being sacrificed to pagan gods, uh, all kinds of things. Even it, it was very bad tr uh, persecution came upon them. They went through a period of time. And notice what happens in the next church. Go to verse 12. And to the angel of the church of Pergamos write, These things saith he which has the sharp sword with two edges. So Jesus, Jesus appears with the sword, with the word of God. And he's saying, I, I, he comes to them with a sword. And not, not much flattery on this deal. He's upset with the church at Pergamos. And there's a reason for that. Because when you read, you find out what they were doing. He said, I know thy works, verse 13. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is. What? And thou holdest fast my name. And has not denied my faith, even in those days wherein of Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. But I, okay, so look, he said, look, you guys have been through some serious persecution. Even in the midst of this, the Satan seat where my faithful martyr was killed, Antipas. Well, we, we done a little history, you'll find out that the, the, that was the altar of Zeus. And on the altar of Zeus, they took, there was a cow uh, that they took Antipas, who was the archbishop of the area there in Pergamos. He was the archbishop of the church. And they, and they tied him up and they put him inside the, the belly of this cow. And then they heated this altar and it, and it scalded him to death inside the cow. And as he screamed in the horrific pain, there were pipes put in the the throat and mouth of the cow so that as he screamed, those pipes made an eerie sound like an organ and they danced around this altar and committed fornication and all kinds of sexual perversion, worshiping Lucifer. This was called the seat of Satan there uh, in uh, Athens. And guess what? Later, when Adolf Hitler rises to power, Hitler not only goes and gets the Spear of Destiny from, from Austria from a museum, and has it brought to him because that spear of destiny believed to be the spear of Loganus or the spear that they pierced Christ in the side. Adolf Hitler knew that other world uh, conquerors had once had that, that spear, you know, that they had once had it, you know, and they had uh, conquered, you know, Napoleon had uh, had it. Um, different people had had possession of it trying to conquer Alexander the Great and others. And so... This was called the seed of Satan. You know what? Hitler, Hitler had that altar of Zeus brought to Berlin, reconstructed. 
and then build a huge platform over top of it. And he would stand on that platform in front of the hundreds of thousands and with the speakers glaring at night. And he would preach his hatred of his, his neo-Nazism and his uh, anti-Semitism standing over top the seat of Satan. It's still in Berlin today. Just keep an eye on that. Jesus makes reference to it. Are you serious? Jesus comes with a sword. And then he says these words, but I have a few things against thee. In other words, you guys have been under tons of persecution, but you still got some issues. And, you, and one of them is, he says, because thou hast been there, you've, you've held the doctrine of Balaam uh, and some other idolatrous things that go on among some of your members. And so Jesus is wanting them to know that's not going to be acceptable. And he's coming with a sword in his hand. So again, another manifestation of Jesus Christ appearing to the seven different churches in the last days. These are the church of Pergamos, or the, excuse me, these are the seven churches of Asia Minor, but they're also periods of time where the exact things were going on in the church age. For the first five churches, we see it take place historically uh, in the church world, bringing us to the sixth and seventh churches. Let's move on. That was the church of Pergamos. Unbelievable story, though, by the way. If you go on to uh, verse 18, the Lord says, uh, but I want to back up because let me finish with Pergamos. He saw some of this idol worship going on and different things, but look what he says to them in verse 16. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. So this is what I'm saying. He came with a sword. He'll fight with a sword. That's the word. And he that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna uh, and will give him a white stone. They understood this. In the stone there's a new name written, which no man knoweth, saith he that receives it. Now they understood that, especially going back in the days of the Roman Empire. In the Roman Empire, if you was a gladiator or if you was a warrior who fought for Rome and came back as a hero... They would, Caesar would have ordered that you be given a white stone. That white stone would be put on a little necklace and you would wear it. And everywhere you went, every time you were, it was free. You got a new pair of sandals, they're free. You sat down and ate a meal, it's free. You get a haircut, it's free. Wherever you went, you had the white stone, you had the keys to the kingdom. Jesus says to this church of Pergamos, but if you'll repent, and do it quickly and start doing the right things, I will give you a white stone. When you get to heaven, folks, you're going to get a white stone. You're going to have the access to the kingdom of God. Everything there will be yours, accessible to you, because you're an overcomer of the world. You've received the word with gladness. You've, uh, you've embraced the gospel of Jesus Christ. You've walked as a soldier in the, in the Lord's army. You've lifted up the blood-stained banner of the cross. You've stood in the gap against the wild of the devil and when the enemy come against you like a flood the spirit of the Lord would lift up a standard for you you ought to be shouting right now quit the doubting quit the pouting start shouting because you're just about ready to get your reward in heaven I'm telling you are you serious it will be the greatest thing in the history of mankind when we walk through the 12 gates into that new city Jerusalem I'll be right back with the rest of the churches of, of Asia Minor. These are the seven churches of the last days. A brand new DVD, Blood Moons and Prophetic Signs. We're taking a very close look at the historical, biblical, and prophetic signs in the Bible from the solar eclipses to the blood moons to the midnight hour of these the last days. What does the heavens mean by shaking, the earthquakes, and other events going on? Get this DVD. Get it now at my website. Are you serious? Let's look at another church. These are the last churches, the seven churches of the last days. Of course, they were all real churches in Asia Minor, and Jesus sent a very powerful word to them uh, as he gave this revelation to John as he was exiled on the Isle of Patmos. 
And as he's receiving these from Jesus, he's, each one has a separate message. And Jesus appears in a separate form. It represents the message, okay? That might help you if some of you have the gift of prophecy, or let's say you have a gift of dreams and visions, and you see Jesus portrayed in a certain way. Pay close attention to how he is represented in whatever is the vision or dream you're receiving because he appears always in the spirit of the message, okay? Let's go on. Verse 18, And unto the angel of the church of Thyatira writes, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, he said, and charity, your love, and service, and your faith, and, my, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. So look, he knows you're a working church. You guys are working at it. You're, 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 you're pushing hard. I can see you got love. I see you got patience. But you seem to be working more than maybe the other part. So, you know, but that's okay. You know, look, he's not throwing them under the bus. He says, but notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce thy servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Now, at that period of time, that's what was happening. They were eating uh, food that had been sanctioned, ordained, if you will, or sanctioned or sacrificed to idol gods. In the marketplace there, they would stamp the meat with the name of the God that it had been sacrificed or offered to. And if you were a follower of Apollo or somebody, you would go and purchase the meat that was already sanctioned for your idol God. And what, you know, Apostle Paul had already taught us earlier that you don't want to do that. You don't want to participate or be a partaker of idolatry. And so, you know, not getting into the, all the, uh, how that could be applied today, let's just say it this way. You, you want to, you know, if you're going to serve the Lord, serve the Lord. And, and don't uh, go running around after strange gods or idol gods. Don't do that. You can't have a little bit of God and a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Stay with Jesus Christ, okay? Stay with Jesus Christ. So look what he says here in verse 21. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. So he's talking about the prophetess. Uh, so Jesus is saying, look, I went to her already and gave her a chance to fix this, to repent of this, to stop this. She didn't do it. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Now, I think it's a metaphor. He's meaning I'm going to allow her, I'm going to give her a platform in which to preach her idolatrous message, and everyone that follows her uh, will, you know, are going to be falling into a great tribulation in their life and into their eternal soul so this is a warning jesus is appearing to this church here's a warning you got some good things you're doing but you got this one issue that's got to be fixed and i've already went to her and told her to stop and she won't so i'm going to give her a place i'm going to give her an opportunity to do her thing now you individually have to decide where you're going to stand you see folks you can't, you can't Keep looking at your neighbor and say, well, I would have went to church, but, you know, I got mad at the ladies' aid meeting. Uh, or, or, gentlemen, you can't just sit there and say, well, I was going to church, but that one guy, I just don't like him, man. He just had a smart attitude. I'm just going to sit here at home. No, you need to get yourself together, okay? Get yourself together. Okay, maybe that ain't the place you're going to go. Maybe that ain't not your fellowship or whatever. Go somewhere else. Don't be, don't be bailing out on God just because something went wrong. Too many people make an excuse. That excuse ain't going to hold water, guys. Seriously, you got to follow the Lord. Okay, let's get this thing right. Is everybody okay out there? Are you guys all right? All right, okay, praise God. I mean, sometimes people will say, oh, no, man, he's, he's coming right down my alley. Well, that's what I'm supposed to do. Now, and, and, and so here's what it says. Uh, I don't want to bore you to death. I want to get you to heaven. Some folks are going to fall asleep, slide into hell, and don't even know what happened. Whoa, how'd I get here? I want you to know exactly what you're doing, and that you decide which way you want to go. Let me move on. Here's what it says. And I gave her space to repent. We know that, Okay. I gave her space to repent, and uh, she repented not. So he's going to give her this other platform. Now he said, I'll kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he, which searches and reigns and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. 
Now, what he means is her followers won't make it. If they choose to follow her or follow this, uh, this way of teaching and preaching, uh, this uh, doctrines of sin, I will not. They, they're not going to make it. You got to get right and get, follow Jesus. We're back to the same thing. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Just follow Jesus. Okay, just follow Jesus, the seven churches of the last days. Uh, let's move on. Look at, look at the next one. But unto you, verse 24, but unto you I say unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have uh, not this doctrine and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. So for those of you who aren't, in, aren't guilty of that, so even though that was going on in that church, not everybody was listening. Not everybody was following her. For those of you who, who made the right decision and didn't follow that spirit, God bless you is what Jesus is saying. I know who you are. Keep going. Keep doing. Didn't say quit the church. Said just keep doing it. So you see what I'm saying? There's a lot of denominations. It's not about that. It's about you and your relationship with Jesus. Not everything's going to go good in the choir. Somebody's going to get mad in the choir. Somebody's robe ain't right. I didn't get to sing soprano. That one's in baritone. That guy can't sing. Why is he in the choir? Uh, don't worry about it. Keep singing. Okay, praise God. Got to work things out. Oh, now let me move on. Are you serious? Look, move on to the next chapter, chapter 3. The 6th and 7th church, the last two churches are running simultaneously according to Dr. Jack Van Eppie. And I believe he's right. He says, unto the angel of the church of Sardis write, these things saith he, that has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, and thou has a name that thou art, that thou is alive and you're dead. But be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember thou from thou has received and heard and hold fast, repent. If thou for thou shalt not watch, I will come not as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come unto thee. So he gives these guys a chance. He's saying, look, you say you're alive, but you're pretty well dead. There's some of you are barely hanging on. You can make this thing right if you start. How do you, how do you dry up and die? You've got to stay in the Spirit of God. You've got to stay in the Word of God. You've got to stay in the love of God, okay? Stay in the love of God. It gives you life. So anyway, he, uh, you know, he wants them to know that uh, he has the power again. Now, the church of Philadelphia, verse 7. And the angel of the church of Philadelphia, he says, These things saith he that is holy and that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. Look how Jesus appears to the church of Philadelphia. I come to you holy and true and with the key of King David. What? <laughs> he, I, I can open doors and shut doors and shut doors and open doors. I'm in, look, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. No man could shut it, for thou hast a little strength and hast kept my word and has not denied my name. Praise God. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and to worship before thy feet and know that I love thee. So he's saying to them, this is, and this church here, obviously he's coming to them as the Messiah, the king of, you know, the, the root of David, uh, he's coming with the word. He, he's opening the doors, and he wants everybody to follow him. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Oh, my Lord. In other words, I'm getting ready to come and get my bride. You are ready to go. I want to rapture you into the glories of heaven and that you will not suffer the wrath of God. Listen, for you've not been appointed under wrath, okay? No Christian suffers the wrath of God. That's, that's the judgment of God. Persecution, yes. Temptations, yes. You know, some of the sorrows, yeah, we go through some stuff, but we don't go through the wrath, not the punishment, not that. We're out of here. He's coming to get us. He'll keep us from the hour, that great hour of temptation that's going to come up on the earth, okay? Can you believe this? We got one more church to go, one more to go. I'll be right back in just a moment. A brand new DVD, Blood Moons and Prophetic Signs. 
we're taking a very close look at the historical, biblical, and prophetic signs in the Bible, from the solar eclipses to the blood moons to the midnight hour of these the last days. What does the heavens mean by shaking, the earthquakes, and other events going on? Get this DVD. Get it now at my website. Well, unto the angel of the church of Laodicea, write, these things saith, amen, the faithful and the true witness and the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, and thou art neither cold nor hot, and I would that you were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth, because thou sayest, I am rich and increased of goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Get some faith, that thou mayest be rich, and white, in raiment, and that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint your eyes with eye salve, the anointing of the Holy Ghost, that thou mayest see. And as many as I love, I rebuke and I chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and sup with him and he with me. And to he that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Jesus plainly says to the church of Laodicea, you are lukewarm. You say you don't need anything, you're poor, you're blind, and you're naked. But I got grace for you. If you will repent, if you will go get the eye salve, if you'll go back and get the anointing, if you'll follow Jesus, behold, I'm standing at this door and I'm knocking at your heart. He's begging this last church to come back to him. The seven churches of the last days. Is he speaking to your heart today? Give your life to Christ. Get back on the right path. Come back home to the Father. Some of you are prodigal sons and prodigal daughters. Don't be left out. We're too close now. Time is running out. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to rededicate my life. I want to repent of sins that should not be there. I want to make changes in my attitude. I want to change my walk. I want to speak softly. I want to walk in your spirit. Help me in this day forward, Lord, to be prepared for your return. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.